the mystery of exemption. How real is exemption? Is there such a reality in the spirit? Is there a provision in the dealings of God with men where a man can be exempted? Genesis chapter 4 verse 13. Let's start from there tonight. Media, let's walk together tonight. Genesis chapter 4 verse 13. The reality of exemption. Everyone, please read. We're reading to verse 15. One, two, read. This was, hold on. This was a situation between Cain and God. Are we together now? Cain, having discovered that he killed his brother, God pronounced certain judgments upon him. And this was the response of Cain. One, two, read. And Cain said to the Lord, Uh huh. My punishment is greater than I can bear. 14. Behold. Thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass, this was his fear, that everyone that findeth me, hold on before we go to 15, everyone that finds me, no specific i mean look at this kind of tragedy in a man's life everyone that finds you destroys you and then something happened in verse 15. the first demonstration or the second demonstration outside of the garden of eden where we see a man being exempted 15 read on please and the lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth cain vengeance shall be taken on him and the Lord set a mark upon a man he had cursed. This was his request. Reduce my punishment, O God. I know I'm already cursed. You have made me by your pronouncement a fugitive and a vagabond. And everyone, that means there was another mark. He said, anyone that sees me will kill me. And the Bible says... And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Why? Lest any finding him should kill him. Does that mark still exist today? Where God can put upon a person. Lest any sickness finding you will kill you. Lest any catastrophe. Exemption is a reality. You have to believe this. In the economy of God. The aspect and the dimension of kingdom reality you believe is what will become your experience. It is important to listen to men of God, listen to pastors. It is important to be loyal to people. But you are only loyal to them provided they are loyal to the word. If a man is not loyal to the word, I will not listen to him. Because he will peg me around his limitation and present his limitation to be the full portrait of all that there is in God. So believing him in innocence, I will still be bankrupt of certain dimensions of spiritual reality. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Meaning if you find at any point that I'm not interested in developing myself in the knowledge of God, you are authorized to divorce yourself from your loyalty to me. And he set a mark upon him. Exodus chapter 8, 22 and 23. Let's give the second scripture tonight and then we'll begin to build. Exodus I like us to read it we're reading 22 and 23 together one to read and i will severe in that day read on the land of goshen in which my people dwell listen and that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that i am the lord in the midst of the earth last verse and i will between my people and thy people and he says tomorrow shall this sign be exemption is a sign a signboard leads somewhere when i get to a place and i see someone's hair and a clipper upon it it is a signboard saying there is a babin saloon close that means when god exempts you it's a sign that the hand of god is within the vicinity at work in the life of a man he says tomorrow shall this sign what sign a division 
swarm of flies will come and devour people and their crops and their savings and everything but i will put a division say lord exempt me shout it with faith lord exempt me exemption is real it is a reality in the system of god there are men there are ministries there are organizations that are working in the reality of that truth and the goal of this teaching is to help us you cannot boastfully speak of triumph in a year when you are watching things kill people i think it was kenny who was over at my place briefly just for a word and then um he met me having a conversation with Ejimi. we're discussing something very serious and then he said i think a woman i don't know maybe the woman is here a dear woman of god who lost two children concurrently i think within this vicinity lost a child they went to bury the child before they came back or i think immediately they came back another one died don't ever tell me that's a natural death no sir i know god enough to know witchcraft when i see it are we together and i will put a division a division God, please pay attention to what i'm teaching you I have taught again and let me say this the realities of the kingdom are available in Christ but they are accessible through understanding backed up by obedience that's what the Bible calls faith faith is not quoting scripture faith is the journey of faith starts with your understanding and accurate comprehension not just of what god has said the end of understanding is you know your role in the equation if you don't know the part you have to play you have not understood it there are so many people listen carefully there are so many people who want the things god has said but they do not they even have the zeal to obey but they are they are in confusion as to what their roles the role that you have to play obedience is key if you are to experience anything in the kingdom deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord it says to do and observe all that i command thee to do and observe not discuss and wish not desire and intend to do and observe all that i commanded this day that this blessing shall come upon you overtake you right and all of that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you so many believers are living in an illusion that because god is so mighty he will not allow them die like that after all jesus gave his only son let me tell you something this thing called the will of man is an implication on us the will of man stops god from assuming man needs his help your obedience is proof of your dependency in, on god it is costly to sit down and assume that after all god knows i need his help god knows i'm tired of poverty god knows i don't want death god knows the background i come from god knows the witchcraft in my family you have to engage the world through understanding and complete obedience complete obedience say amen the next time you pick your bible don't just search for what god has said search for what he told you to do to see what he has said this is how believers become matured let me tell you something brothers and sisters many of the continual woes in people's lives is not because the outstretched arm of the lord cannot show up it is because they are waiting and hoping that because jesus died upon the cross one day he will change my finances one day he will take away evil from my life that day may never come it says there remaineth a rest hebrews 3 4 for the people of god there remaineth a rest it says if you hear his voice harden not your heart 
as they did in the provocation in the wilderness and died the day you hear his voice is potentially the day of your breakthrough the meter of your success starts reading from the day you obey not from the day you hear you can hear God when you were 10 years and obey him when you are 40 the meter reads that you have obeyed God for one year obedience is what counts are we together not just blind obedience obedience based on understanding because you can obey nonsense you can obey what pastor said you can obey what apostle said but only hope that what apostle said is really what god said come i can give an instruction and god says let's go right that's how we're going to get the result are we together now and then you move left you see that with that kind of instruction listen two things will happen number one you stand a chance of being destroyed because although you are obeying my word is not consistent with the word of god now let me tell you something i've learned about god i've shared it here the mercy of god which is the last dimension of this series we are going to consider are we together now is such that because you obeyed me totally believing that i came from god god will remove that breakthrough and relocate it to your direction of obedience it should not have happened but because you will have to honor your faith because you received me as touching christ then god will deal with me now for misleading you so that one is between me and god but you are not going to be punished for obeying me as passive this is why you will see a man of god teach nonsense people will obey and still get breakthrough it's not because what the man is teaching is right it's because the testimony of god is upon their obedience and so god will prove himself then the man of god erroneously will justify that because it worked it meant it was correct no as you walk with god a day will come when god will say if you do it again i will deal with you i've been keeping quiet and you have been manipulating money from people the other time you lied that i sent you to a jimmy to collect hundred thousand he gave you and he got a car and you claimed it was a sign that you are you are apostle joshua selma if you tell anybody to give you money again i will personally reveal myself to you in the night vision <laughs> say obedience mary said whatever he tells you to do do it can we pray just for a minute and say lord the spirit of disobedience you know there's such a spirit pray get it out of my life oh god I'm tired of the way it has been cheating me and shortchanging my destiny. Castito, be very serious about it. There are many of us, the moment God tells you to do something, there is a spirit that refuses you from obeying. Tithe! And the spirit said, don't worry, they are just trying to destroy your money. You are sick and God says, take the communion. He said, all this nonsense, I don't want to look like a child. Cast it. It's a spirit of disobedience. No, oh yes. We will obey. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Oh, oh yes Lord. hallelujah praise the lord god bless you thank you very much let's do a quick revision um in the last discussion that we had together we agreed that the first key the first principle prescribed by god for any individual any group of people to experience exemption is what we call the God first principle everyone say it after me yeah the God first principle according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the Bible says to seek first his kingdom and I told us that when God becomes secondary in our lives we have signed in for disaster God must become first and all not first alone first and all first and all are we together anytime god becomes first alone that's not enough he must be first 
and all that's what gives meaning to every other thing that comes in your life and then the second thing we talked about is the mystery of kingdom service and we stop there am i right the mystery of kingdom service and i told us there are three dimensions to kingdom service we took on number one and we said soul winning and establishment please make sure you don't forget we agreed that soul winning talks of helping men find jesus and leading men to embrace the lordship of jesus over their lives and we examined a few scripture i don't want us to go there i'll just quote them quickly daniel chapter 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall be like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the heavens even forevermore and um the bible also said in second corinthians chapter 5 18 to 20 that god has given us the ministry and the word of reconciliation both the ministry and the word of reconciliation and we looked at proverbs 11 verse 30 the bible says he that winneth souls is wise and remember what um david said about wisdom he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice so part of the benefits of soul winning is that you have access to the wisdom of god that will produce results in your life so we'll take it off from there the second dimension of kingdom service that we must engage for supernatural exemption is service in the house of god write it down kingdom service service in the house of god exodus please exodus 23 and then we'll look at 25 to 26 please make sure you write it down and you follow carefully service in the house of god very few believers have been taught that service in the house of god is a system created by god for men to experience supernatural exemption exodus chapter 23 25 and 26 okay let's read it one two go and ye shall serve the lord your god uh-huh four things he will do four things i want us to understand what is your own part of the deal you shall and then when you do serve him he shall bless your bread and your water that's number one number two he shall take away sickness from the midst of thee number three verse 26 there shall nothing cast her young or be barren so we see the blessing of fruitfulness and finally the number of thy days i will fulfill all this and more just for serving in the house of god now listen carefully most believers think service in the house of god is a way to help the man of god and help his vision or help the church grow it is a very dangerous understanding part of the kingdom responsibility of any and every believer is to contribute actively to the advancement of his kingdom and that involves making sure that every structure and platform he has put together finds an atmosphere and an environment where people can be saved built equipped and empowered to represent his purposes and that includes service service in the house of god as prescribed by god in fact when the lord was sending moses to pharaoh this is what he said go and tell pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me serve me there are many people who have gotten more results than even their personal spiritual lives because they have subscribed to the foolishness of kingdom service are we together now many people do not know that service in the house of god brings blessings many people pity the man of god and say there's nobody holding camera kai let me not waste my 
Nigerian TV College certificate. Let me just come and help them. The moment you have an idea that you are helping a man of God or helping a ministry, you have destroyed your potential for blessing through service. Are we together now? Every worker in the house of God is an employee by God. You have to understand this. Every genuine worker in the house of God is an employee by God. What a privilege to be in the labor force of God. You work for people, you don't trust their integrity, you don't trust them. There is no guarantee of their reward. And here comes the king of the ages, recruiting men and women to make sure that his house is served properly. Do you believe who lied to you that you will serve the king of kings? Look, there are men who serve God for a living. I'm not talking of pastors. They serve their way into unimaginable breakthroughs. As good as soul winning is, do you know it's a terrible thing? And this has been the foundation of our teaching even in this ministry. That you are born again and not actively useful. Your energy, your wisdom, your creativity is not contributing. I cannot sit down in a place and be comfortable that the grace, the gift, the creativity, the, the energy that God has given me is not participating in the building of the Lord's house. That when souls are saved, you cannot say my energy contributed. My wisdom contributed to making this happen. I was part of those who set the sound for those outside to hear the word of the Lord and be saved. I'm part of those who clean the altar to make it conducive. I'm part of those moving around. When someone fell under the anointing, as that demon was flying out of his life, I held him. If your energy cannot be accounted for as being used to serve God, you qualify for disaster. It's not a threat. It's the truth. Job 36 verse 11. Read with me, people of God. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36, please give it to us. Job 36 verse 11. One to read. If they obey and serve him, uh -huh, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. What's the condition? If they obey and... So if Bill Gates money, if Bill Gates energy, if Bill Gates institute is contributing, if Zuckerberg's Facebook is contributing to advancing the kingdom he qualifies to profit more than a tongue-talking christian whose energy are we together now if they obey and serve him the moment your energy you remember the bible says love the lord with all your heart uh-huh with all your might all your strength everything about you must contribute in that process you can't say i love god that no 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 the worship songs that lift the spirit of men, did they come from your secret place? Or are you just a recipient? You came to the house of God and saw chairs cleaned. And you argued and fought with people and sat down. And God is watching. When I was falling down, why didn't you catch me? You just allowed me to fall down like that. And God is watching. Listen. You can serve your way out of any cause and any yoke. I've said it years, years, and I will repeat it again. I, I don't want to use the word fear like dread, but I have a great respect for people who serve me in Christ and serve God because I know they are walking their way to an enviable dimension. Service. Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, 
forever I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you My best Lord Is everything I am My best Lord I give all I have to you You made me great You made me special These guys don't know the song You made me great I give all I have to you Yeah, you made me great You made me special You made me great I give all I have to you My best Lord Is everything I have My best Lord I give all I have to you My best Lord Is everything I have My best Lord I give all I have to you Listen This used to be our national anthem Those times when we were preparing for crusade We would sing it and dance As we walked ourselves out like fools It was a song I wrote as a love song to God a, a declaration of my surrender How could I give him less You know when you go to buy clothes They will tell you there is this type But if you really have money let's climb up There is a section I don't have that kind of thing with God Everything he finds is all of me hmm. Service Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 Let's read it One to read And they shall be mine uh huh. In that day when I shall make up my jewels, I will spare them. Read on. As a man spared his son, not that loves him, that serves him. Next verse. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Uh huh. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him. There is a difference, so sister, don't let anybody fool you and say keep serving all these stupid people. That's how everybody will marry and leave you. Just hold on. God will give you a man that is equivalent to your salary of 30 years. While the rest are there using WhatsApp to connect and arranging, you are serving. Do you know sometimes people can mock you as you serve God? They'll say you are serving God so that you get husband. Is that not a good reason? Is that not a good reason? Is it not better to serve God and be sure of what He gives? Oh, come on now. Many workers in the house of God are turned to be fools because they spend their time, they spend their energy, and when people who don't understand spiritual things look at them, they say, But, Papa, Sam. You are underutilizing your potential. That's what they say. Simply because in many circles, maybe the people are not staff of the ministry and may not be receiving anything like a salary. And so men, you see newspapers insulting men of God and say the labor force they should have employed, they now get people in. Many churches, while they are building, you will see wealthy people come and they are trying to put it and they insult the men. Let me tell you certain things about your service that makes it fruitful. Number one, your service must be willing. If you serve God out of compulsion, you will never receive a reward from it. Please understand this. This is why as a ministry, we never coerce people. You don't manipulate people using curses and say if you don't serve, no, 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 no. That's, that's manipulation. If there be first a willing mind, Willing mind service, it must be willing. Number two, it must be with joy. It must be with joy. 
you don't serve God with joy, forget about your reward. Believe what I'm telling you. Grumbling all around, say, oh, today is Tuesday again. We are just going to pray. Only God knows where Apostle is. We are just suffering to pray for him and he's enjoying. Let me tell you, you speak like that, God will punish you and the covenant I have with him will punish you. Two things against you. Very bad statement. And when you stand, blah, 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 blah. And there, you see people pray all their heart and say, why are they doing this? Did they charm them? That's the same way when they are enjoying the blessings and you talk, God will say, keep quiet. Thank God you saw them when they were praying like fools. Brothers and sisters, I show you the 21st century investment, serving God. Serving God. Banks will not teach you this, oh. Serving God. Wholeheartedly. With all your heart. You are giving God everything. You are sweeping the house of God. And you know sometimes I watch these people when the power of God begins to move. And sometimes people are around under the anointing, coughing all kinds of things. And you see all those ushers coming and I'm saying, my God, look at this. Sometimes they are there scrubbing the toilets, cleaning the toilets. People with dignity and respite and their reputation, they throw it on the ground just because of the house of God. If you were God, will you leave them like that? Please answer me. If you have been evil. No, I think I'm compassionate enough to see someone who is serving sincerely and not let him go hungry. Let me tell you something. If you know you are serving God, especially in this ministry, wholeheartedly, you have a right to claim a reward. I teach the leaders. You can go before God and say, Lord, I am in your payroll. No witch, no devil, no darkness. I'm serving. Lord, I swept your house with sincerity. Lord, I was cooking the food. This is the evidence of the firewood. This is it. This pain is a scar, it's a testament. Lord, when I was given an assignment to lead prayer, I did it with all my heart. Unto you. When I was serving as a head of department, it's not I service. With joy, the Bible says, shall you draw. There are many angry preachers. When they come on stage, you know they are angry. As though the members are not blessing me. I'm here blessing you and you are not. Please, pastors, don't harass any member they didn't call you. Go and meet the person who called you. Don't harass any member with money and all of that. Do you know, let me tell you something. Let me digress and talk about this money thing. If you manipulate people to bless you, number one, that money will never be useful to you and you rob them of their blessing. The secret of being blessed from people, raise them. Raise men, not money. Raise men. Empower people. Pour your heart and teach them everything. And they will surprise you. Some of you will build me houses in the future. No, 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 you will. You will. It's not whether you like me or not. You will be too blessed to forget about me. It's a programming. Something is happening to you. I know you think I'm just motivating you. And then tomorrow someone will be angry. And say, what is it about this guy? You know, let me tell you. Let me teach you a secret of greatness. Find people who are weak and start investing in them. Grow with them. You can change their future, but you can't change history. Your name is already imprinted in their starting up days. Not that you see somebody who you did invest in just because he has a car. You say, it's my son. Are you stupid? What did you contribute in his life? That's why nobody calls a blind person his son. Nobody calls a deaf person my daughter because they are looking for privileges. But there is a way you will bless somebody and pour your heart. And they say, Lord, bless me. Let me find something to do to this person.